Portuñol did not represent any kind of intrinsic subject, but rather a joint habitation within discourse, a situation of relative parity, which is also the case with the poet Wilson Bueno, except with an important twist. Wilson Bueno has been called by Adrián Canguí eh, uno de los más grandes escritores de frontera, un maestro del dialecto y del desliz entre idiomas. He was born in 1949 and just died actually this past year on May 31st, 2010, the victim of, a, of, a, of an attempted robbery. Um, it's a horrible uh, accident. Uh, in 1992, Wilson Bueno wrote a book-length poem that soon became sort of like a cult text, a poem in prose called Mar Paraguayo. Nestor Perlonger saw the text and read it when he was sick and one of his last introductions, uh, introductions uh, one of his last texts was an introduction to the poem called uh, Sopa Paraguaya, that's the title of Perlonger's text. The title um, Mar Paraguayo in itself seemed to point out an impossibility, a delusional image, a kind of mirage or a, or a utopia. In the tale of Mar Paraguayo, in the text itself, a woman sits next to a window she takes care of an old man and sees a young, beautiful boy on the beach in Guaratupa. These two oppositions are the gist of the discourse. A man that is about to die, and the young and agile and physically stimulating young man, 17 years old, a total object of desire. These two oppositions are the gist of the perverse text that is Mar Paraguayo, where the frontiers of the text in itself limb what is acceptable. For how can you put together the waning desire for an old man, his body practically decomposing in front of us with the sexual prowess of young age? As the, as the woman who is a marafona speaks, a number of borders are illegally crossed, not the least being the one among different languages. For Mar Paraguayo is written in a mixture of Spanish, Portuguese, and Guarani. Spanish and Portuguese combined in what we have generally termed a portuñol. And Wilson himself, in the comments he's made about the text, had the vision of the two languages as copulating in a way that at the same time contrasts with the dialectics between young and old and the woman's desire. Bueno, in his statements about the poem, himself noted the profound illegality of his text not only because of the border crossings that are found within it, but also because the text is against the laws of language. And I quote, eh, bueno, <coughs> la ley de esta novela, and he always refers to Mar Paraguayo not as a poem, but as a novela. Eh, eh. La ley de esta novela es la de que el lenguaje no tiene ninguna ley, constituyéndose invariablemente en devenir. If Portuñol is invented and reinvented as a kind of linguistic miracle, that stylized combination, both for Perlonger and for Bueno, in Bueno, the Guarani in itself stands apart. It is an exiled language, not generally invited to the triumphant border crossings of modernity, but one that manages to impose itself within the fabric of the text. While Mar Paraguay can be read with a certain degree of legibility by those familiar with Spanish and Portuguese, the poem has at the end a glossary of Guarani terms. In an obvious nudge to the long and distinguished tradition of regional writing in the Americas, Bueno adds this glossary. But it is clear by just glancing at it, for example, that the presence of Guarani has less to do with language than with the presence of a kind of autochthonous worldview, a philosophy of time and being that colors the work as a whole. According to his own words, Wilson Bueno says that with Mar Paraguayo, and I quote, desee dar una respuesta estética al aislamiento histórico en que se encontraban sumergidas las lenguas del continente hispanoamericano. Al mismo tiempo, todo me indicaba la dirección de un personaje que fuese un poco nuestra alma común, nuestra alma cachorra y perturbada por el drama. De ahí la aparición de la protagonista del libro, la muñeca del balneario, 
con todo lo que eso implica de prosaico y de sublime. Si tú ves la novela en Guaratuba, en la orilla, en la orilla del Paraná, no solo porque allí se encontraba exiliado el recién depuesto dictador del Paraguay, Alfredo Stroessner, sino también porque la ciudad era efectivamente el mar de los paraguayos, balneario preferido por la clase media del país vecino. Mar Paraguayo is a stunning, difficult, blocked text, separated internally by colons. The linguistic potlash underscores the paradox of strangeness and also the familiarity of that language at once grounded and at the same time a constant translation and reinvention of itself. Because Mar Paraguayo is written in Portuguese, Spanish, and Guarani, to the extent that the modification of one part of the equation entails the modification of all, it exists in a space of its own. It is a, a text that seems to be impossible to translate, for what other combination of languages could be even closely approximate to the kind of linguistic sense of place and, splay, and space that creates it. Wilson himself has said, and I quote Wilson once again, Me parece asombroso que la lengua guaraní presente en mar paraguayo haya sobrevivido a siglos de dominio, sometida al yugo a través de los métodos más infames, y que esté ahí tensa, intensa, viva, dulcemente manejable por la poesía. Ella misma, poema en estado bruto. Pero lo mejor de mar paraguayo a mi entender es ese borrar todas las fronteras, la indeterminación, como en la teoría del caos, generando leyes sutiles de determinaciones imprevistas. La ley de esta novela es la de que la lengua no tiene ninguna ley, constituyéndose invariablemente en devenir. Claro que me estoy refiriendo desde el principio a la lengua expresada en la novela por dos idiomas, el español y el portugués, que, como copulando, producen una tercera lengua, el portuñol, estilizado, igualmente reinventado como milagro y simulacro. Las palabras en guaraní son las flores en el embés de las lenguas. En todo el discurso de Mar Paraguayo, and I'm still calling bueno, of course, el guaraní se impone, exiliado, hecho, resistencia, palabras poemas, brillo y rebrillo, salpicones de luz. Con todo, el guaraní no se mezcla, se recusa a participar en ese juego floral entre el español y el portugués, a engendrar salvajadas portuñólicas. El guaraní es un elemento autóctono en el posible panorama de Mar Paraguay. End of quote. And this is uh, from an interview actually called Fronteras. With, with <clears throat> of the many elements that one has to remark here, this last one is the most interesting. The fact that it is from the autochthonous element itself that strangeness originates. Bueno wants to ground his text with the presence of Guarani, but Guarani always stands on a space of its own. It is as autochthonous as the text where languages has, are mixed as the poetic texts that weave language in a way that only multilingual texts can, by creating their own space as one that validates impurity, mixture, and contact. The point is not to create, the point for, for Bueno, is not to create the monolingual universe of Guarani, not necessarily, nor necessarily, to write in Guarani, but sh to show the, quote, mother tongue, end of quote, interrelating with the language games, adding the sense of strangeness that comes from the return of this language onto the space of the present. Like a visitor from another time, Guarani may add depth to surface, but ultimately surface rules.